one is about notifications while your application is running. Uh, now, anyone that's used, um, say, Exchange, ActiveSync knows that you can get messages sent to your device when they hit the server. So you don't have to poll constantly, is there a new message? Is there a new message? Is there a new message? You just wait for the server to tell you when there's a new message. Well, you can do the same thing in your application using push notifications. Again, saving battery life because you don't need to be constantly polling the server. You just set up a push notification, wait for something to happen on the back end, and then when it does, the server will ping your app, and the app can say, oh, there's a new message from my cache, and display it for the user. So push notifications are useful both when you're not running and even when your application is running. And now I want to talk a little bit about how push notifications actually work. Like, how do you use them? What do they do? So let's start off with your application. And your application is running on the device. And the user says that they want to sign up for some notifications. So you open up what's called a push channel with the push client on the device. And the push client turns back, returns back to you a URI. And it's just standard you know, web URI. It points to one of our live servers back in our data center. But that's a URI unique to your application, unique to the device. Uniquely identifies you. So then your application sends that URI to your backend service using whatever mechanism you want. You can have your own custom authentication, your own you know, custom protocol if you want. However you want to get it back to your application, if you've already got existing code, for example, you do it however you want. And then your service just sits there. It's got the URI, and it waits for time to pass. So tick tock. TikTok. Eventually, something interesting happens that the user cares about. Event happens. So what happens is your service takes that data that's interesting to the user and just posts it to that URI it got before. So there's no secret source. There's no special protocols. There's nothing magic happening. It's just HTTP post to the URI we gave you and an XML schema that says, here's the data. That's all you do. So if you have an existing application that uses kind of a webhooks uh, model to talk to other services, great. Works on Windows Phone, super easy. So the push service takes the data that you gave it, looks at the URI, figures out, whoa, which device do I need to send it to, sends it up to the device. And then, of course, if your app is running, we give the data to the app. If you're sending a toast, we show a toast. And if you want to update the tile, we update the tile. So that's kind of the, the round trip of how push notifications work. You get a channel from the device. You send the channel URI to your server. The server sends data to that URI. And then we do the magic to make it pop up on the screen. So that said, let's take a look at some code, because it's actually much, much simpler than it sounds. So if we switch back to the laptop. I'm going to go ahead and add a new page to my application. Let's go add new item. I'm going to add a page. I'm just going to call it push.xaml. Push. So, oh, and you'll notice, remember I mentioned before, I commented out those resources so I could show you um, theming. If you see a white screen like this, it means you forgot to uncomment them. So I'm going to go back in here and add .xaml and uh, uncomment them so that we can actually go back to having a visible design surface. So back to push.xaml, there we go. We can see what we're doing. Again, I'm just going to uh, drag and drop in some XAML. No rocket science here. It's a stacked panel that has a button and two text blocks. The first text block is where I'm going to display the channel URI, which we get back from the service. And the second one is I'm going to display errors, because I'm not sure how good the networking is in here. And if there's an error, I just want to make sure that uh, my app hasn't crashed. And if we look at the code for this, it's actually going to be really simple. I, I, I really wish I could write some of this code live, because it's not that difficult. But in the interest of time, I'm going to use these, uh, these snippets um, and then just walk through them. So the first thing we do is we create an HTTP notification channel. And this is that channel I talked about between the device and the URI that you sent to your service so that you can push data to it to get to us. So I create a channel. And then when the user clicks on the button, I want to open a channel. 
So I create a new HTTP notification channel, and I give it a name. I'm just going to call it Demo App. Um, and then similar model that you saw in, um, in Mike's talk, if you were here for some of his, uh, like the accelerometer, similar model to location, which we'll see in a moment, is that these are all kind of callback event-based systems, because they're all asynchronous. So I'm going to add an event handler for when the channel URI gets updated, when I get that URI back from the push client. And I'm also going to add an event handler for an exception occurred, because again, networking here is kind of flaky, so I don't know if it will work. And of course, then I'm going to open the channel and put that inside a try-catch block. Now, if an exception occurs, I'm just going to display that on the screen. Um, and these come back on background threads. So with all things Silverlight, you may need to dispatch to the UI thread. And when the channel URI gets updated, so when I get that URI from the push client, I'm going to update the channel URI text and put it on the screen. Now, what I'm not going to show today but Istvan will go into tomorrow, is how easy it is to actually bind to a toast or to bind to a tile. If I was to say channel.bind, I don't know if you can see the text here, but there's two things here. One says bind to shell entry point, and that's another name for a tile. So this is how I would bind this channel to a, a tile update. The other one says bind to shell notification, and that's how you get a toast. So I'm not going to show these today. This, Istvan will show those tomorrow. I'm just going to show you the, the simple code to get the URI, and then hopefully, if everything is working, we will actually see the UI, URI on the device. Oh, and one, I always forget to do this. Let me go back here. In my main page, I actually need to have a link to this page so I can get back to it. So in my main page, another hyperlink, just like the others. This is go to push page, and we're just going to go to push.xaml. Control F5, let it run up in the emulator. Um, now here you see kind of a, a, a half-themed, half-not-themed app. Because I uncommented out those themes inside the, um, the app.xaml, some of the controls, like the hyperlink button, picked up that green theme. Uh, but the page in the foreground did not. They picked up the hard-coded colors. So um, some things will be green, some things will be blue. That's OK. That's just because I left those, um, those resources in the app.xaml uncommented out. So if I go to the push page. You'll see here the button is black because the theme says black. But uh, it should be visible. If, if you can't see it, it just says open channel. And fingers crossed, depends on what the network's doing. If I click this, let's see what happens. Yes, we get back a URI. So here you see it's just an HTTP URI to uh, something in the live data center. And there's a bunch of you know, goo here, which is how we uniquely identify the device. But this is the thing that you send to your service. And then your service just posts data to that URI. I mean, it, it couldn't be simpler. So this is how push notifications work in Windows Phone. And now I'm going to switch to the final part of the services, which is location services. Oh, this is auto-forwarded through everything. OK, you've seen my amazing images now. Uh, so here we go. Location services, um, and you'll see the little blue cloud here saying no emulator support. Um, the emulator does not support um, GPS, uh, and it doesn't support location. But one of the things I will show you is I've kind of written a mock that pretends to be the location service. And I'm going to have that on my blog later, so you can use it in your apps to pretend as if you had location on, on the emulator, even though it doesn't ship with it. So what we have with location services on Windows Phone is a combination of smart software on the device, and a back-end service that lets us balance the accuracy of the data that you need from a location service with the time and power it takes to get it. Because sometimes, uh, let's say you're building like a Yelp application, you only really need to know what city am I in or what zip code am I in. But other times, if you're writing a, uh, like a Follow Me app, uh, you really want to know down to the, you know, the meter where you are. And so there are different requirements based on the kind of application you're writing. 
And one of the really, really cool things about location 